Before it became an alfresco garden and the landmark that it is today, Baluarte de San Diego was here to protect Manila at its bayside. Come and let's discover one of the most treasured attractions here in the walled city, Intramuros. In 1586 to 1587, a circular watchtower was built with adobe. The tower was designed by a Jesuit priest named Antonio Sedeño and named Fort Nuestra Señora de Guía. This fort is one of the oldest stone fortifications here in Intramuros. Because the foundation was built on a sandy beach, it became unstable and the tower was refortified several times. The upper portion of the tower was demolished in 1593, while the rest of the structure was integrated into a new spade-shaped bulwark. The rest of the structure was completed between 1653 and 1663 and is now known as the Baluarte de San Diego. The durability of the fortification was tested in 1762 when Manila was invaded by Great Britain during the Seven Years' War. The Baluarte was damaged and breached by the British forces with cannon fire. It was only restored when the Spaniards returned to power after two years of British occupation. But it was destroyed again and eventually abandoned after the earthquake of 1863. Rehabilitating what remained of the original tower within the Baluarte after centuries of damage proved costly. So, during the American colonial rule, they covered it with earth. This proved to be beneficial as the earth shielded the structure from destruction in World War II. While the whole Intramuros, including Baluarte de San Diego, was heavily damaged, the tower within it remained preserved. Because of this, the tower remained forgotten for several years. Until 1979, when the Intramuros administration excavated and exposed it after being hidden for decades. In 1992, gardens were added and it became a public park and events place rented out to celebrate special occasions and private functions. The 16th century stone ruins provide a unique backdrop, while the fountain and the pergola complete the perfect setting. This is an ideal spot to enjoy quiet time, especially in the early morning or late afternoon. The grassy portion below is the driving range of the 18-hole Club Intramuros Golf Course. It was actually a moat before and it was covered into a sunken garden and later repurposed as a golf course during the American colonial period. Club Intramuros is one of the oldest golf courses here in the Philippines and now operated by the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority or TIEZA. The Baluarte used to have an overlooking view of Manila Bay and it served as a natural defense of the walled city. Not far from the Baluarte de San Diego is the Bagumbayan Light and Sound Museum. It narrates the history of the Philippines through the heroism of Dr. Jose Rizal. It is narrated with video clips, lights and sound effects, and moving mannequins. This public park, event space, and archaeological site is located south of Intramuros and has survived natural and man-made adversities. What you saw is just a glimpse of Baluarte de San Diego and of Intramuros. Come, visit us and experience the beauty of this historic fort through its ruins.
located just a few meters away from the Manila Cathedral and Palacio del Gobernador, Fort Santiago is one of the most significant historical sites in Manila. Join me in discovering Fort Santiago, a 400-year-old site that has stood as a witness to major milestones in Philippine history. We begin at Plaza Moriones, this open expansive space that greets visitors upon entry at the fort. Here are numerous structures, including the Balwaratilio de San Francisco Javier. It served as one of the walled city's seafront defenses and storage chambers in the Spanish colonial era. During the Second World War, it was turned into a prison cell by the Japanese military. Today, it houses the Intramuros Visitor Center and several shops. This is a reducto, an independent structure outside the walls that serves as the first line of defense. It also functioned as a storage for ammunition and food supply. Today, it houses the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. We return to Plaza Moriones, one of the many plazas or open spaces in Intramuros. Named after the Spanish Governor General Domingo Moriones, it was once an open ground for military drills, parades, and ceremonies until its destruction in the 1863 earthquake. The U.S. Army then took over and used it as a barracks. Now, it's an open space where events and activities in Intramuros are held. Across the plaza is the Almacenes Reales or Royal Warehouses. This was a storehouse for goods unloaded by ships at the river gate during the Manila-Acapulco galleon trade. The unreinforced stone arches which originally supported the second floor remain intact a testament to the durability and timelessness of traditional architecture. Then in this area remains the soldiers' barracks. During the Japanese occupation, former Philippine President Elpidio Quirino was imprisoned here for 16 days. This space is also used as an exhibit area by the Intramuros administration. This brass plaque contains a roll of honor and the list of survivors of Filipinos incarcerated inside Fort Santiago during World War II. This man-made canal was restored in the 1980s and connects the Pasig River to Manila Bay. The fort's entrance is guarded by two ramparts, the Baluarte de San Miguel on the left and the Medio Baluarte de San Francisco on the right. These ramparts were built in the 1600s to fortify the defenses of Fort Santiago from the river and the land. Here stands the main gate to Fort Santiago. The main gate is decorated by a wood relief carving of Spain's patron saint, Santiago Matamoros, as well as the coat of arms of the former kingdoms of Castile and Leon. Castile is represented by the castle, while the lion represents the kingdom of Leon. This was a former military headquarters of four successive colonial empires in the Far East. The pre-colonial history of Manila can also be traced in this section of Intramuros where the kingdom of Raja Sulaiman was once located. At the center of the fort proper is Plaza de Armas. It derived its name from the use of the area to stock arms and rifles when not in use. Similar to Plaza Moriones, this was also where the soldiers marched around for their daily drills. This was a two-story adobe building which housed the Spanish artillery companies. Destroyed during the Battle of Manila, this was renovated into an open-air theater for the use of the Philippine Educational Theater Association or PETA. The main room of the soldier school was converted into a chapel cell for Jose Rizal, who was transferred here after 56 days of imprisonment at the soldiers' barracks. According to the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, it was here where Jose Rizal married Josephine Bracken.
This passageway, the Postigo de la Nuestra Señora de Soledad, was the main access of Fort Santiago's occupants to the Pasig River. The promenade was rehabilitated by the Intramuros administration and is now a riverside park. Here stands the Rizal Shrine. This place was the former soldiers' barracks which had a pantry and food storage before it was used as a cell for Jose Rizal. Today, Rizal Shrine or Miseo ni Jose Rizal pays tribute to the life work of the country's national hero through its theme settings and relics. Now, we enter the dungeons. These used to be gunpowder magazines before being converted into prison cells. After the Battle of Manila in 1945, 600 decomposing bodies of prisoners were found here. The remains were subsequently buried en masse on an open ground nearby and is marked with a white marble cross. This site used to be the Casa de Castellano, the residence of the fort commander. This was built in the 16th century to protect the entrance from the Pasig River. The ground floor of the Baluarte de Santa Barbara has recently been converted to an educational facility known as the I Make History Lego Education Center. Falsa Braga means false wall. This deceived the enemy and protected the fort from heavy bombardment. From a military site that bore witness to Manila's multi-layered and at times tumultuous past, Fort Santiago is today a national shrine that welcomes visitors to learn and relive our people's journey on to becoming this nation called the Philippines. Mabuhay! Welcome to Plaza San Luis. This cultural commercial complex houses various restaurants, an arts and crafts store, and Casa Manila. Casa Manila, or Manila House, was built in 1981, copied from the ancestral house that once stood in Cali Habaneros. It's a lifestyle museum aimed at showcasing the domestic lifestyle of a native principalia during the Spanish colonial period. Let's go and see what's inside. Before we enter, we need to bang the Antillian door knocker in order to inform servants that there are incoming guests. This part of the house is called Zaguan or Corridor. It is through Zaguan where the carriages or the carruaje entered and dropped off passengers by the stairs. The ground floor walls are made of adobe and volcanic tuff, like the walls of Intramuros. Meanwhile, the patio flooring is called Piedra China. The patio served to cool the rooms of the house. It was also used as a garden. We are now at the mezzanine, also known as the entresuelo, literally means between floors. Rooms in the entresuelo were reserved for extended family. Guests can sometimes be accommodated, but the extended family usually lived here. This unique seat is called the capilla. This is the bachelorette's room. The bed is made by a Chinese carver named Atai, famous in the 19th century. Atai beds used to be a status symbol. Other common furniture at that time include the baul or the wooden chest and the butaka. Here in the despacho, also known as main officina, the owner of the house conducted his business transactions together with his clerks and accountants. 
wealth during the colonial era was mostly sourced from the lands called haciendas. While some earned from the galleon trade, most of the principalia were landowners called hacienderos. The main workstation is a massive desk called escritorio. We have just reached antesala or caída, meaning to fall, referring to the stair landing. During the day, the family used this area for entertaining close friends or having merienda or afternoon snacks. These decorative wooden panels are used to circulate air between rooms. The volada is the area between the dining room and the antesala. And here we have Sala Mayor. Very important people were entertained here. This room was decorated to show off one's status in society. Tertulias or late afternoon parties and bailes or dance gatherings were held here. Older people discussed the latest in politics, business, and fashion, while the children of the host, particularly young ladies, lead the singing and playing of musical instruments. Here is the oratorio or prayer room, where family gather at night to pray the rosary. This room is considered another sign of affluence. This is the cuarto principal or the master's bedroom. Tradition dictated that the master of the house would give up his room for very important guests staying in for the night. This is a reflection of a traditional Filipino hospitality. Meanwhile, the children's room is decorated with a carousel design ceiling to make it more appealing. This is the comedor. It's a typical dining place for the family. It showcases the family's collection of silver, glassware, and porcelain. A comedor usually has a punca. The servant pulls the string to drive away the flies and to help ventilate the area. This is the cocina or the typical kitchen. It has a banguera or slated wooden dish rock used for air drying newly washed utensils and tableware before it will be kept inside a plateria or pamingalan. These cookie and biscuit molds in various designs are made of hardwood. One has San Nicolas de Tolentino, the patron saint of bakers. Let's go this way to the letrina or toilet. The one you'll find here is good for two. Flushing was done by throwing large buckets of water into the tubes. The bathroom contains two sizes of bañeras or bathtubs. Since the family was of the affluent class, they normally had many servants. The master just sits in the tub while the servants pour water. After bathing, the servants unplug the cork of the tubs, draining the water into the floor. This is the azotea or the open-air balcony. It is here where you can see an aljibe or the water cistern. It is either filled with rainwater or potable water. These are just a few of the things you'll find in a Filipino ancestral home. And there's a lot more to discover. Come visit us and let's get to know more about Casa Manila.